Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and with the ranking set for Wimbledon now, we have some interesting changes to the top 10 for the men and the women, and also the race of the finals. Remember, points won't be given out for Wimbledon, so the rankings aren't going to be too different over the next three weeks. So this is the real last big change. But let's start with the past results and see who won last week. So we had four tournaments on last week. Let's start with the WTA at the Birmingham Classic. And I did Mayo. She won her second consecutive grass court tournament in a row. She is one of the most informed players on grass right now. She beat Simona Halep along the way and then Zhang in the final 5-4 retirement. Unfortunately, Zhang couldn't continue having played the semi-final in the morning. So I did Maya, definitely someone to watch out for over Wimbledon. And the Berlin Open, another retirement, but it was for Jabor against Bencic. Bencic rolled her ankle and Jabor got the win 6-3, 2-1 retirement. So both the ladies' finals ended in retirements, but we learn a lot this week on the WTA and who to watch out for in the next few weeks. Over on the men's side at the Hella Open, we had Hubi Hercatch beating Daniel Medvedev, the world number one in the final, 6-1, 6-4. And Medvedev has had back-to-back -back finals just can't lift any trophies this year, unfortunately, for Medi. And at Queen's Club, Berrettini goes back-to-back -back on grass, winning Stuttgart last week, and Queen's Club this week, 7-5, 6-4 against Kranovic in the final. Berrettini back with a bang. All right, let's go start with the WTA rankings, and there were some big changes in the middle of the rankings. Iga Swiatek, she stays at number one, with Contivate coming in at number two, who we haven't seen since the French Open. Paula Bedosa, she drops down one spot, making way for Ons Jabor, who had a very good week last week, winning her third title. But both of those players are playing this week, so we'll see if there might be another change next week. Sabalenka, she dropped down number six, making way for Zachary, who made the semi-finals of the Berlin Open. She goes up to number five, so the top five seeds for Wimbledon will be the top five players in the world. Pushkova, she comes in at number seven, and Pagula goes down to number nine with Colin going up to number eight. Just a little bit of a rankings change there because of some points dropped from last year. And Muguruza hangs onto that top 10 spot for another week. She is only nine points ahead of Raducanu, who's at number 11. So who knows what will happen over the next week. Taking a look at the race of the finals, and there were some big changes in this as well with Iga Swiatek, obviously at number one, hasn't got anything to worry about points-wise. She is dominating. She's already qualified for the WTA finals. On Jabor, she stays at number two. But Coco Goff, she goes up to number three, pushing Pagula down to number four. Goff making the semifinals of Berlin while Pagula didn't play. We also have a change in the middle with Zachary going up to number five after having a good week. And also Kazakina going up to number six, making the quarterfinals of Berlin, pushing Bedosa down to number seven, who didn't play last week. But like I said, Bedosa is playing this week. So we'll see what she does on the grass. And coming in at number eight, we have a new number eight, Belinda Bencic. After a couple of good weeks, quarterfinal in the Netherlands, and then a final in Berlin. She goes up four spots, number eight, slotting into that final spot for the WTA finals, meaning that Kudamatova comes in at number nine, and Danielle Collins drops down two spots to number 10, with Madison Keys getting pushed out of the rankings completely. Taking a look at some of the players that have gone up in the rankings over the last week that are outside the top 10. Starting with Hadid Meyer, she goes up three more spots to number 29 in the world. She'll be seated at Wimbledon with that ranking. So a couple of good weeks. She goes up another three spots. And Zhang, who made the final of the Birmingham Classic, she goes up 13 spots, number 41 in the world in the singles. So both players who played well last week in Birmingham getting a boost in the ranks. Players that have gone down in the rankings over the last week, we have Cornet. She's gone down 10 spots, number 44 in the world. And Samson over. She's gone down 18 spots to number 47 in the world. She won the German Open last year, so lost a lot of points, but not doing as well as she did this time last year. Taking a look at the ATP rankings now, and not too many changes with Medvedev at number one in the world. Zverev comes in at number two. Djokovic, he stays at number three. Rafa at number four, just behind Djokovic. So there might be some changes over the next couple of months. Kasper Ruud, he comes in at number five. With Tsitsipas coming in at number six. Alcarez at seven. Rublev, he's still at number eight. With Oje Aliassim at number nine. But we do have a change in the 10th spot. Berrettini, he drops down despite winning in the Queens Club event. He's dropped down out of the rankings, making way for Hubi Hercatch, who added a lot of points to his ranking. He goes into number 10, two spots higher than last week. So Hubi Hercatch, despite doing exactly what Berrettini did, he had a lot more points up for grabs, whereas Berrettini did not. So Hubi Hercatch steals the number 10 spot for this week. Let's take a look at the race of the finals now, and not too many changes, with Rafa staying at number one, and Alcarez coming in at number two, Sidney Pass at number three, Kasper Ruud at number four, Zverev at number five, but Daniel Medvedev, adding 300 points to his total, he goes up to number six. Two spots higher than last week, making the final in Halle. Ojeel Yassim, he stays at number seven, but Andre Rublev, he's dropped down to number eight. So Medvedev and Rublev have swapped spots 
for this week. Two spots lower than last week, Rublev. Djokovic comes in at number nine, just outside that top eight. And Taylor Fritz, he gets pushed out of the top 10 completely, making way for Hubi Hercac, who added 500 points to his total and goes up four spots higher than last week. Taking a look at some of the players that have gone up in the rankings outside of the top 10, Krajanovic with a great week at the Queens Club Championships. He's gone up 17 spots to number 31 in the world, which will get him a seed at Wimbledon. And Oscar Ott, he goes up 14 spots to number 37 in the world after making the semifinals of Hella. He's gone back-to-back -back semifinals over the last two weeks on grass. So just outside, maybe he sneaks in and gets a seed at Wimbledon, but... Definitely someone to watch out for. Players that have gone down in the rankings. David Goffin, he's dropped down 19 spots to 58 in the world, losing some points from Heller from a few years ago that have stayed around because of the frozen ranking. And Roger Federer, he's dropped down 28 spots to number 96 in the world, dropping 250 points from winning Heller three years ago and holding on to those points because of COVID. So Roger Federer, he's only got 600 points and those are mostly at Wimbledon. So he's not going to have a ranking in a few weeks time, which is going to be interesting to see where he falls after Wimbledon. So there you have it. They are the rankings for another week and it's starting to look really interesting and it's going to be really interesting over the next few weeks with Wimbledon not giving out points. And then of course, Djokovic, not being able to play in America. So he's going to lose a lot of points at the US Open, Cincinnati Open, Washington, all those tournaments that lead up to the US Open. Let me know in the comments below, who are you shocked that is not in the top 10? Because there's a lot of players that have done well over the last few weeks who maybe haven't been rewarded as much as they should be. Or are you shocked at some players that are in the top 10 still somehow and should be higher? Some, play, some, people, some people have been commenting that Rafa should be higher. Remember, Rafa doesn't have any points to defend from now until the end of the year. So he could definitely be world number one at some point this year, Rafa. So all the Rafa fans out there, I know you love to hear that. Let me know down in the comments below. What do you think of the rankings this week?